Students are substantive in this debate. Firstly, why this motion will uh, create better parents, and secondly, why this motion will uh, prevent the uh, abuse or neglect or other like, negative circumstances occurring to children. But firstly, I will just be going through some setup. Um, so, what will our model look like? Um, there will be. Uh, so, what will the classes look like? So, we uh, we um, propose that these classes um, will look like going to be teaching these parents, like firstly, optimal parenting techniques, uh, teaching parents how to deal with common issues um, that may arise with children. Uh, secondly, what are certain acceptable things for these parents to be doing and not acceptable things uh, uh, for parents to be doing. And thirdly, uh, this will be delivered through a range of mediums, uh, whether in person, Zoom, online, um, basically just learning, teaching parents what is acceptable and what is not. Um, this is to occur like closely before or after the birth of a child. Um, and if the, there is a, a large gap, say seven or more years between the birth of the next child, uh, then this, there needs to be a refresher course. Um, and secondly, what will the uh, as, uh, assessments look like? Uh, basically, these are just going to be assessing the parenting tips. Uh, these are going to be quite similar to like workplace training, um, like you know, should you operate uh, mach machinery without supervision assessments, uh, quizzes like this. And there will also be some scenarios, like for example, in your RSA, when you did like. Uh, uh, send in a recording of how to sort of reject someone um, and cut them off uh, from alcohol. Um, a few more things um, in setup. Um, so, like, what what will happen if like an, uh, a parent scores uh, poorly on uh, this quiz? Um, so, firstly, you can pretty much just like recap um, and like point to the things where the the parent themselves isn't very strong, like they don't have the most knowledge on. Um, secondly. Uh, it can substantiate claims on things like neglect, so it's probably, don't see that this is going to be the tipping point if you score poorly, like on your first time in the exam. This isn't going to be like um, uh, like a reason for welfare to you know, kick down your door and like inspect it and take your child away, things like that. This is not going to be the tipping point, but it will substantiate, it will help substantiate claims for like more regular check-ins and things like that. Um, it will just help welfare and child protective services know um, that something could be wrong. Um, and thirdly, test scores um, can sort of like, uh, again, help uh, child protective services like have knowledge to focus on these particular households. I'm um, just noting the count uh, factual where these like child protective services and these welfare services um, may you know have to sort sort of resort to uh, racial profiling or looking at single parents or parents of like uh, low SES backgrounds to sort of do like welfare checks and things like that. Whereas uh, on our side of the case, there is some substantive um, like evidence for this sort of welfare checks, meaning that there is going to be like a more specific and focused um, check-ins based on proof of these uh, sort of assessments. Um, so now onto the case. Firstly, why would this create better parents? We see uh, four reasons for this. Firstly, these parents are going to be more educated uh, because they're going to be forced to engage. Um, um, they're going to be able to learn things. So this is um, far better than, than the counterfactuals, whereas like uh, parents may be doing like their own research um, to sort of you know feel comfortable becoming a parent for the first time. Um, so this is good for two reasons. Firstly, because it's mandatory for all people. You know, um, currently, you know, not all parents you know go and read themselves uh, how to how to raise a kid book or things like that. But secondly, um, a lot of these current guides to parenting and things like that may be unsubstantiated or maybe perhaps radical, sort of, sort of like the like anti-vaccines and things like that. The some of the stuff and some of like the um, stereotypes out there may be a little bit radical and they may be largely unsubstantiated. Whereas, however, on our side of the case, this is going to be created by the government that has you know clear incentives to make sure that you know future generations being raised well by their parents this is going to be very credible, you know, put together by experts, things like that. Um, so there's probably going to be a better quality of information. Just to summarise, there's going to be more people doing it, and secondly, there's going to be a better quality of uh, information on how to raise children. Um, secondly, at the point people are being tested, uh, people are just more likely to take in information, they're more likely to study. Obviously, like, they don't want... Um, and the, People have like an incentive to to like not feel like they're a bad parent. Um, this this is uh, can be seen like you know if someone if one of your friends um, who's also like expecting a child asks you you know how you're feeling you you're gonna want to sort of perceive yourself as as knowing uh, what you're doing. You may you know again these people may have like read these books and things like that to make sure that they feel validated. But at the point where they actually have to take a test, they have to study. They are likely to engage thoroughly with these resources, and they are likely to sort of uh, make sure that they um, 
know this information. Uh, thirdly, um, at the point that there are gaps in knowledge, again, this is known about and can be improved upon. Um, they can get knowledge and feedback and to improve on what they would otherwise not know. They have gaps um, in their knowledge about what perhaps could be a bad parent. Um, and fourthly, again, this provides government and child protective services reliable data to, to use and reshape the narrative, um, which I will get into um, in my impacting um, as why this is important. Um, but essentially, the, the government and child protective services, it is more useful for them to have this credible information to go off based on, say, poor test scores rather than the counterfactual, which is sort of arbitrary, perhaps lower socioeconomic um, status and things like that that they have to go off. Um, they can make sure that, like, if a particular community within a society is, like, sort of engaging in worse practices, they can then, the child protective services know to sort of target, like, have specific advertising. Um, and secondly, once again, this information is going to be more accurate for um, the, uh, the government and child protective services because it is based on actual data. Um, so what are the impacts? We have uh, three main impacts. Firstly, um, this leads to better... Uh, Parents, just better parenting in general. Um, what does this mean? Like, you know, they know how to deal and overcome challenges. They can raise their children better to be happier, healthier, you know, lead better lives. Um, and this is obviously a good thing for the future generation. Um, secondly, we believe that this will also kind of erode the social norm of like gender norms and things like that in parenting because both parents will need to, you know, fully engage with and pass this course, it, 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 it's going to sort of uh, help to remove the stereotype that it's you know, not just the, the female within a relationship who is uh, sort of having to raise the child, is you know, the obligation and need of both parents to sort of focus um, and improve their own skills to develop the, their health and skills of their child. Um, uh, so for these reasons, uh, we believe that um, our model is going to create better parents um, uh, within society. And secondly, why will we prevent uh, instances of abuse? Um, put quite simply, uh, this uh, failures or low scores on these assessments will help to raise red flags. Um, or like, so this can be seen through both the classes. You know, if there's like erratic or you know uh, sort of weird behaviour in these classes, this can be seen by the people running these classes, or if their courses in the videos that they send in. And secondly, and more broadly, like in the assessments themselves, if they're saying like you know. Uh, if I think it's okay or sometimes okay to, you know, take drugs in my child or something like that, these red flags can be raised. Um, again, we don't see that this is going to be, uh, this assessment may not be the tipping point of, you know, again, like welfare coming in and kicking down your doors, but it, um, again, can substantiate uh, action that may need to be taken in the, in the future. Um, so people say that it's, uh, so just to quickly impact that, uh, firstly, this will lower the abuse. Um, and secondly, it can lead to uh, red flags and more predictability. So thank you. At the start of my speech, I want to make one thing perfectly clear. At the point in which Cy Affirmative teaches this majoritarian, probably heteronormative view of teaching standards, that is the point in which you profile minority groups who were not previously profiled under the status quo. You put them on a watch list with child protective services, and you provide pernicious actors within the government and child protection services, specifically in global countries that have particular attitudes towards minority groups, and you give them ammunition to come and investigate, whether or investigate your parenting, and you give them arbitrary standards by which to not, not maybe not kick down your door right from the get-go, but at the very least, Form of what the opposition describes as welfare checks. Also, I want to clarify something. This debate to operate, you cannot just make this test baby easy where everyone passes and nobody fails, because at that point, there's no usefulness to the class whatsoever. Basic biological information about how to raise a child and to not give them drugs is already supplied, standardised in hospitals. Your parents tell you these things. You do a lot of research when you are in the process of becoming a parent, when you are pregnant, so you are prepared for what happens when you deliver your child. For the opposition to say parents have no knowledge about the basic biological necessities for a child, let alone the fact that parents have parental instincts, we think is frankly ludicrous. What we think this is likely to do is follow the rest of the characterization that they say, when they say, oh, this will teach good parenting practices. 
Note that they never give a single example of what these good parenting practices actually look like throughout their case at all. And I'm going to tell you what we think they actually look like. A few points of setup. First, we think that just like these classes are likely to be large, and it means it's likely to are going to be difficult to isolate cases of particular parents. We also think when the opposition says, oh, we will use these tests to like make red flags for abuse, obviously no one knowing what the test inscribes, knowing the impact that these tests could have on their prospects as a parent, no parent is going to rationally put down on the test, I think it's good to hit my child in a, in a, in a country where the government, where, where like the, the, the parenting norms, I suppose, and the legality is that you should not hit your child because it is child abuse. Similarly, we think that as a result, there are a set of people that do not follow the general parenting structure. Perhaps that is same-sex couples. Perhaps that is polyamorous couples. Perhaps that is couples that are of cultures that have particular and different standards in raising children. They do just fall out of this testing system. And at this point where you flag them as potentially bad parents, not only do you produce a cognitive dissonance within these parents when conducting these classes, they're forced to unlearn everything that they had previously learned about the standards of parenting. And you place all of this unjust stress on these individuals, you also flag these probably pretty good parents as particularly bad. Okay, what do we think this actually, uh, where do we think this debate stands? The first thing is just to substantiate my claim about why majoritarianism is bad. We think that firstly, particularly in countries where, you know, perhaps it is legal to be a same-sex couple, but like you are particularly stigmatized and discriminated against, obviously child protection and the government are going to use this to push heteronormative norms, to fail these same-sex couples, make them ineligible for things like adoption, make them ineligible for things like surrogacy, remove their ability to have the child, remove the parent from the home. At the very, uh, sorry, remove the child from the home. At the very least, you will have child protection services conducting welfare checks, but you know, they come into your house and they ask your child whether or not, you know, your parents hit you, or whether or not, um, or, or, or whatever it is, particularly in this case, likely to be particularly homophobic content. At this point in the, in the debate, like, I think it's particularly important to realise a few things. The first is just like, there is a huge diversity in the way that people parent. Every single child is unique. No one parenting standard will ever fit for each child. Also, at the point in which you are testing parents before they have had their child, or early into the parenting process, they have not had any actual hands-on experience of what is required to parent a child. What they do have, however, is like, um, Perhaps their child has just been born and they are, they are like very sleep deprived, a high degree of anxiety in conducting these tests because they actually are, you know, taking hours out of their days to complete these classes instead of actually, you know, parenting their child. Like at that point, we think it's particularly difficult for people to engage in this material at all, let alone pass this test to any significant degree. What this also means is just like when you disagree on things like newborn care that experts tend to disagree on, at the point in which you have a different viewpoint, you are being failed, you are being flagged, there will be some follow-up from child protection services that doesn't occur in the status quo. That is because unlike what First Affirmative tells you, child protection services does not go around to random households to conduct welfare checks. They go around to households they've already placed on their register to conduct welfare checks. We think in countries where they like to push particular political agendas against against minority groups and against certain ways of raising a child, that is the point in which the opposition allows pernicious actors to get their way. Perhaps this does not occur uh, in the majority of, of you know, uh, more moderate or more uh, Western countries, but we think it does definitely have to occur at a global scale. There are just a bunch of exogenous factors that would make you bad at taking this test and put you on this watch list that would subject your parenting experience to a lot of undue trauma. Like I told you, you probably have anxiety about being a parent in the first place. The second is maybe you've been taught very distinct parenting norms that are at a cognitive dissonance with what you're being taught. Third, it just might be like a bad test, test taker and it's probably exacerbated by the anxiety of at least what you believe is the threat of losing your child from the home if, uh, if like, you fail this test. What do we think the impact of this is? The first is that like, when you enforce the standards of parenting that a government legislates against the diverse set of parenting norms, there is a degree of parents that would be good parents to their child, that would not abuse their children, their children would grow up like healthily and with, you know, um, I suppose, good mental health, uh, good values or whatever, uh, that, that do just get profiled unnecessarily. You lock out these good parents from participating in the system particularly well. But we also just think like the most vulnerable stakeholders are the ones that get locked out for the reasons that I've already described. We think this is particularly bad. Now to address the abuse argument of the opposition. 
perspectives, already described in my setup why you are unlikely to catch these people with abuse. This test is likely, as the opposition described, going to be wide sweeping. Nobody's going to admit to abuse on a test. The second thing is like circumstances of abuse to a child often occur in emotionally volatile scenarios. For example, you're particularly angry, you're subject to like maybe you like um, drunk too much alcohol, your rational thoughts are not occurring at the point in which you um, in the point in which you abuse a child. And so when you are sitting down in a test and class environment, those standards do not mimic each other. So whilst you may answer on a test that you think it is bad to hit your kid, but if you have like 10 beers and you're because you're an alcoholic and then you hit your kid when you're drunk, that obviously does not correlate, that's not going to be picked up by the test. The second thing is just like children need stability, right? When you are when you're placing parents in parenting classes that go directly against what they have been taught, how to parent, perhaps because of cultural reasons, but I already told you, it is just like there is a huge cognitive distance that occurs. Parents are likely to try a bunch of different parenting standards instead of keep into the same set of circumstances. Biologically, children need stability, they need safety, they need authority, they need consistency in order to learn, in order to grow, in order to foster. That is not often under side, um, it is only often under our side. The second thing is just like the, the welfare checks that will happen more so under their side than under ours, especially unwarranted welfare checks, are just super traumatizing. Like it's it's very difficult as a child to have a random person come into your home and ask you questions about whether your parents are good or not. That's obviously like um, deeply uncomfortable for both the parents and the children, likely to raise the anxiety in the household, especially if they know if you've been profiled. That's more likely to lead to things like abuse than anything else because you're placing these parents under um, uh, under environmentally stressful scenarios. The final thing is just like, as my, as my remaining speakers will talk about, the foster care system and government system is awful. It's chronically underfunded. It's chronically understaffed. Often there are more instances of abuse in there than there are in like uh, actual homes. It's just like, uh, this is just like a fact, the OIP knows this. And so at the end of this debate, you must believe the opposition unjustly discriminates against parents with different standards, and this is a massive problem. Thank you. I think it's a little bit silly that the opposition is like, oh, it's harmful when like you get like someone come to your office and ask like, are you okay? Well, yeah, it's also pretty harmful if your parent literally, physically, and mentally abuses you and is way more tra tragic. And like, unless they give something that you hit that even have any little bit more of a comparable weight to the harms that we offer you, today we get up in every um, brain possible. Three things in this bit. First of all, just explaining just a little bit, but like just explaining why this like might be used to target minorities, like why we're actually like you know quite uh, good for them. Secondly, explain like just what these um like what these tests actually look like, what kind of matches are we putting, and just kind of, kind of overcoming the opposition to search it. Um, especially it's going to be like heteronormative matters. Then explaining why child abuse is like far far less prevalent on our side. Firstly, what did they tell me? What were their measures? So basically, came out and explained that like this is going to be extremely harmful to minorities because it's going to be a good way for governments to come out and just like um, um come out and just like oppress minor oppress minority groups. Um, a couple of um, things. Uh, couple of things to say. Like, note that what these things are probably going to look like is like a series of like like harmful like norms that like just like you know not like the super bad stuff like you know don't give like drugs and stuff to your child or like don't like kind of like smoke in front of them but also other things like you know talking about like norms of like you know maybe like a parent who's like puts heaps of pressure on their kid because their 10 year old didn't talk to uh didn't like tap at like the um whatever eu drifts like our most recent debate <laughs> comment is and you know like locking them in the room like stuff like that it's like maybe like some people like can be justified as like oh you're just helping them the better like these like harm how's more why are unlikely to be like super harmful to minorities both of all, we think at the point where like governments are willing to engage with this and willing to like actively suppress minority groups, they probably don't like actually need these tests. They probably don't care. These are probably like more likely to be like illiberal democracies or kind of like where minorities are already there. So they're probably just going to take other methods. And we can actually flip this by explaining at the point where you have like a substantial proof that you're probably a good parent because like you know you did like do a long bit, you did like really want the test scores and like okay maybe like you said like oh no I strongly disagree with like the statement that oh it is like. Um, 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 oh, it is bad for like, um, for like, uh, like same-sex parents to replicate the child. You strongly disagree with that, but then you like answer all the que questions really, really well. It's probably going to get more credible and like make it less likely for the government to be able to justify engaging in these oppressive acts. No other discount of fractal where they don't have that substantial 
piece of cake. They're more likely to engage in these oppressive actions and more likely to explicitly target minorities. But then also secondly, that just like is a norm or just like, you know, probably a culture of acts such as like racial profiling or minority targeting, which is like embedded in the culture, maybe like not like an active attempt, but just like a self Con subconscious racial bias, which means that they're more likely to um to target these uh, households and over target these households in the same way that like often police are just like you know have subconscious racial bias or conscious racial bias to like target minority. <laughs> but then second of all, at a point where like these acts are actually occurring, you probably have more credibility. Because in the world where like they um engage with it, where like you know no tests being substantiated, it means when like you appeal to like international organisations, you appeal to like UK overseas, it they can just be like an R word against it. But the point where you're able to produce a substantive piece of evidence that suggests that you probably are a pretty good parent, the analysis is going to be far more persuasive and it's going to create even much more international pressure for government from like international bodies, other like governments. For, parents, uh, for these elements to stop engaging in the day. So it means that, like, far, far, it actually means that this, like, acts as a crucial piece of evidence to support them. Not even if, like, you believe their claim, which the tests, like, are just, like, made super bad faith. Again, people are able to, like, recognize it and, like, you know, deconstruct the test. You know, like, oh, this and explaining their news article when, like, they explain that, like, this ex country is, like, you know, taking away kids. They're like, oh, well, like, these, like, questions at, like, aren't that bad, just an like, example, but they answered really, really well to all, like, the actual questions, all the questions that, I don't know, maybe appear in our, in our text. So, we don't think that it's going to be, like, a, like a, a way to kind of, you know, protect minorities, but we actually think minorities are going to be far, far more protected, far, far more supported, but in the right, very worst case, I think it's just, like, simply symmetrical, even if you don't believe the harm that I just offered you, it's simply symmetrical because these governments probably don't care, they probably don't need this test to engage in this act, note that it, like, probably happened already. Now let's talk about what actually occurs. Because what we see is like just despite like oppositions like framing like um heteron like heteronormative um and narratives, there's like a series of like harmful uh, things that like are super harmful. There's things like you know, maybe like like not like physically abusing your child, but maybe like you know like like hitting them with like they've done something wrong, or like you know placing like lots and lots of press, or even like access to just, like feminism. Often these are like committed by good faith parents who like do love their kids, but they just like wrongly think that this is what is our best for them. What are we doing? We are um, essentially guarding it. Obviously, that the, these are just hetero and like that. But I think like you can like kind of universally say that these are pretty harmful acts, and it's pretty unclear. Are uh, they were, like also just like on that kind of heteronormative stuff? It is like pretty unclear why like like same uh like same sex parents um um oh sorry like same sex couples um can't like actually engage like can't engage with these tests. They can still answer questions about whether they're not like a good or bad parent. It's not about this. It is simply just about like what is good like what a good act. What a bad act. It's completely unclear. We need some more explanation. Because at, like, I think apart from the assertion that like, I don't know, um, queer couples can't engage in these um, uh, tests just like seem a bit confusing and unexplained. So, what is actually gonna happen? A couple things as we told you to like basically like no response. It's like firstly, they are probably just going to get educated because it's gonna be far, far better than any education that they offer. Because one, they're forced to engage with at the point that they get tested on it. This means that rather than like you know just reading them to make it feel better about themselves or might get create the impression of a good parent, they're actually gonna like engage and sympathize, sympathize the information. But also secondly, this information is going to be far, far more reliable because it's going to probably be substantiated and credited by expert learning, by like hundreds and years of evidence which support like some of like some like of, like what is like a good parenting method and like what something called like cause childhood um, trauma as opposed to like kind of unsubstantiated claims which parents do readily access such as oh you know giving your child a, um, a vaccine will like could increase the risk of autism. But then thirdly, we also think that at the point where you have a series of feedback, a lot of like very, very like substantiated data, the governments can kind of like understand what are some harmful norms that exist in parenting. And this will be able to like actively take steps to preempt against them, such as increasing like, you know, the emphasis or investment in like the education module, which is gonna like be effective very quickly on like, you know, opposition strategies to like just mitigate it by saying like, oh, these classes like won't be big, they won't be uh, quite effective, and also like, oh, it might be quite hard. Nobody explains to you that it's gonna be like delivered in a series of different ways, which makes it accessible for anyone. Noting like we are aware, like not idiots, like obviously like being a parent, you want parent pity, so that's why they're going to deliver it in a series of ways. But we also just think at the point where these classes are going to be like be effective, they're probably going to be concentrated in order to evaluate effectively. They have an active incentive to like make them a decent um a decent size. 
Um, so what do we see? We see not only are we actually going to educate them also, but we also just see like, they try to find this rule and make parents feel bad about themselves when they do bad. But no, someone like, you know, maybe answering one a couple questions wrong on something that's like a little bit harmful, isn't super harmful, the response isn't, oh, let's take their kid away. Their response is like, okay, let's educate their parents and make sure they understand why this thing is wrong. No, they probably already learned it, so it's unlikely they're actually going to engage in this. But even if they do get it wrong, we just increase the education. No, the only way that we're like engaging these people better is when like the questions are super, super harmful. Lastly, child abuse. So they try to explain that like someone being checked up on child abuse or like living in the foster care is worse than being physically or like mentally abused by a parent. A little bit unclear as to why that is true. But let's explain um, um, why it's not. And um, they basically said like, well, people who like aren't just going to like tick these answers because like they're not idiots. No, people who engage in child abuse aren't rational actors. So I think this is slightly certain. And like, note these questions are probably going to be framed like, uh, like a, like a tr slightly more like nuanced way, where it's not like expressly clear, and like you can probably give a pretty good indication of like what um, child abuse. Like in the same way that like psychological like uh, psychological reports will often like show signs of like if you're like to be a psychopath, even though like someone rational might not engage with it, or like might be like, oh no, I don't have like thoughts of killing someone. Someone who's not rational and abusing their child. But then also secondly, there's a set of correlation which you can probably use to prevent this. So this means that not only do you like actually stop the child abuse and like, uh, but in the long term, you actually entirely prevent it because they're able to come in, they're able to like educate people in a way to stop child abuse occurring. So proud to uh, that. Panel, I think there's been a really big oversight by the on what the point on our test is. At the end of the day, our test is to teach mostly new parents and is to prevent future abuse. The majority of people taking this test should not be abusers in the first place. If that is a small subject, small subgroup of that certain group taking the test, then sure, hopefully we can find out some results from it. At the end of the day, our test is for new parents and it's to educate parents. So I think there have been two key ideas ideas presented throughout this debate. Firstly, you know, subjectivity versus the interpretation and what a better parent looks like. And then secondly, you know, the government's power, um, the prolificity of, prolificity of our test and, you know, is it actually um, just some general model bashing from both sides. So firstly, I want to touch into, you know, the side of the better parents and just start out on that overall clash on, you know, subjectivity versus interpretation. So, you know, at, at, we, at the start, we, we said quite clearly to you that our test is subjective. It's about showing, you know, parents some key values on what they can teach their kids. It's not a question to a kid of oh, how many mummies do you have? Do you have one mummy? Do you have one daddy? Do you, are you, your parents call in areas? What colour is your mummy? It's not about those values. The, going into deep model bashing about, oh, are the, are, what if the parents are queer? What if the parents are, oh, yes, yes, what if this or that? Is not the point of our test. The point of our test is to educate a general standard. It's not about how many mums you have. And they also presented, I think, a very small counter fiat of, um, you know, we'll put all this money towards CPS and that. But that's a different service. We're looking at education. We want to teach people. We're looking at education for the values of which country is choosing to, in, in, to, to undertake this testing process. And I'll touch, go into that a bit further. So, you know, we're, we're not thinking of money. Um, which colour your mummy is, we're instead thinking of, you know, how many times a week are you spending with your kid? We're looking at just like key statistics, key results, which the government can take into account and use to understand their population and their population values. We're not saying, oh, if you don't spend four hours with your kid a day, we're going to take your kid away from you. That's not what our test goal is. Our test goal is to give a consensus on sh A, showing parents what we're going to, what they need to understand, and B, giving that overall understanding. And we believe that will create better parents. So one thing they brought up quite a bit was, you know, that people disagree on what a better parent looks like and that each country, you know, might have different values. You, if you look at, they you know, the example of countries committing genocide, maybe they will have set really poor questions regarding queer parents. At the end of the day, our test is designed for better parents and if a country chooses a poor interpretation that's out of our hands, we we can see that, of course. But at the end of the day, our test isn't about how many mummies you have. Once again, it's about creating better parents. So I would also like to point out, I think bad countries will do bad things regardless. Bad countries do not need a test to give them the imperative to take away kids. They will do this. So they've already done this. There's no test in China rating kids. They have taken the kids away from like people in the UK camps and things like that. So again, once again, our test, our test's point and our class's point is to teach. And the intersectionality and the different types of parents and all that 
is it the key point? Maybe understanding what kind of peoples are becoming parents within our population might be good data. That isn't the say all and end all um, of what our test is doing. So, you know, um, going on to, I guess, the second class, which is government power and what how prolific is our test going to be. And I want to just like point out the three groups of parents they keep discussing, specifically single parents or lawyers, yes, queer parents, and then just other miscellaneous or race based uh, groups, and saying how, how tests will like marginalise them. We gave no specification throughout what the question about tests will ask. We didn't specifically say it will have how many money. I feel like that's quite a big assertion, which we brought forward again at second, and they've kind of overlooked that. They're not really thinking on to the direct point about test, which is to educate, and is this education worth it for our society? And are the results of the test worthy? And that data, is that qualitative data important to us as a country or the countries that put this forward? So what is, once again, the point of our test? One, educate parents, and two, prevent child neglect. It's not to enforce, enforce standards to take away kids, it's to prevent it. We're trying to show parents, before they become parents, what they should do. That's it, it's not that complicated. And the use of this, we think, is quite important and worthy for consideration. Our goal is not to take away kids. So what does our course provide? Firstly, our course is free, it, so there's no discrimination to whether you're low ACS or not, and it's a government-funded education, which we think that initiative is very important. Specifically, it won't lead to any persecution, but it's more about stopping self-researching. We have specified again and again that it's very important that parents have a good understanding of what is qualitative within their country. We don't want parents looking up things like, oh, should I vaccine my kids, should I not? As our country, we will present the value that is correct. Maybe we are a really evil country and we decide that vaccines, we're not gonna do them. That's that country's imperative, that's their choice. That's not the point. The point is it will be what the country believes is beneficial for them as an overall society. And that may vary from country to country, but at the end of the day, the point is it will benefit them. It will give them the values, the statistics, and the understanding of what their parents are doing and then that overall analysis so they can show parents what we think you should do. Parents may choose to lie. Of course they can lie. That's not the point. If an abuser takes a test, our goal isn't to just find that abuser. Obviously, if someone gets a zero on the test, something egregiously wrong has happened, and then we, we said at the start, we will look into this. But to fail this test, you must have done something seriously wrong. The test is about showing what our values are, putting forward how we, how we, like, how we believe, as a country, you should raise your child. And if you choose to not take anything away from that, that's fine. But at the end of the day, the, the test isn't meant to be failed. It's not an extremely difficult test. They also kept bringing up like how CPS can um, take away kids based on the view of the test. So I guess we can argue that we would just implement guidelines to prevent discrimination when it has for anything relating to the test. And at the end of the day, all we're trying to do is educate parents. So I guess that moves on to more of like the, the government power and like what do these two things mean? Educating parents and preventing, not like once it's happened, preventing child neglect. So firstly, educating parents. In most cases, we simply want to teach them highly valuable skills. Maybe parents need to learn this or that, and they argue, oh, it could be taught in schools. Clearly, with the amount of abuse that happens later on within parents and within families, I don't think it's taught prolifically enough, and it's quite important to actually enforce and enshrine these values. And once again, they push that thought of, oh, the test is a little too easy. And yes, it's meant to be easy. The point is, though, it makes you study. With a reasonable amount of research, with a little bit of time, you can learn what is right for your kids. It's not meant to be something that you spend hours and hours on days and days looking at. It's just meant to be a standardized test and class system that enforces and enshrines good values. So then that touches more shift, shifting on to what if something egregiously goes wrong and we're trying to prevent some child neglect or abuse. Um, and at the end of the day, regardless of if you're a queer household, regardless of if your parents are polyamorous, what colour they are, neglect is neglect. And if someone fails this test, something wrong has happened and that should be looked into. And we, that does give us an avenue to look into. That's not the point of our case as we keep specifying. You know, at the end of the day, um, the, the point of our test isn't to research diversity, it's to set a standard and give information to government that they can interpret and understand in their own way as that country. So again, te the test is not just about abuse, it's about education. We understand no one, some people won't admit to anything, um, how the majority of people aren't abusers. We're not looking for abusers, that's CPS's job. Our job is to just educate the majority. Obviously, we can't catch people most of the time through our tests. The point is to prevent abusers from happening in the first place and actually lead to an overall education the, the, the prop, uh, throughout our population. You know, we, we're trying to prevent neglect by teaching parents strategies. If they choose to ignore that strategy, that's perfectly fine, that's their own prerogative. So, I guess our overall summary is that 
It's, it was a lot of water bashing, and I personally think they didn't bring forward any good or clear solutions or other well scenarios that could create quite a difference. But our test's point is to educate. Our test gives a widespread view to the government. If someone managed to fail, something egregiously wrong has happened, and the average everyday person should pass it, regardless. Thank you. So it's not going to make a buzz because they don't have like the four minute thing. So That's just fine. time yourself. Yeah, I've got it. Can I have you? I don't have. I don't have <coughs> the correct postures. I'm going to step through <coughs> each of side opposition's parts of victory and tell you why they don't work. The first thing I'm going to do is establish the norms around the test. The test must be majoritarian. The opposition does not have infinite fiat to tell us that this test is always done well or in a way that aligns with values that they agree with. They have to prove this. They have not done this. They concede this a third affirmative and fir uh, um, a first affirmative that these values are country dependent. What this test does do is give governments and child protection services an information delta on the potential parenting of the child that they did not have previously. That talks about things like ideology. It talks about things like culture. It talks about things like gender and sexual attitudes. What is the impact of this on the debate? The first is they tell us, well, parents get access to more basic information about how to parent a child. First of all, we tell you this is largely symmetric. This is never responded to. It was unclear to me what the difference in information was from side of if you do not get under our side. We think it's very reasonable to believe that parents get an idea through their own research and through their parents telling them about the basic biological needs of a child. This is not a particularly high burden to me. The second thing that they tell us is that you get less abuse because you can catch abusers on the test. The first thing is that they just concede that you don't catch most of the abusers on the test. The second is all the material I tell you at first speaker about why this test is unlikely to be able to catch abusers. The third is that the situations in which you take these tests and do these classes are not reflective of the situations in which abuse happens. What you must believe then is that all of opposition's benefits on this part are speculative. At the, at the, in their best case, you catch a few more abusers, but their worst case is particularly bad. Why? Because there's a very certain harm for them that we, that we describe to you, which is that you profile people that don't fit in with majoritarian norms as a necessity of marking them wrong on the test when they write a different answer. And we think this is particularly bad for pernicious government actors. We tell you at the point in which this test occurs in China, or this test occurs in Iran towards non Muslims, or well, this test occurs in Uganda towards homosexual couples, that is the point in which the government is able to get their foot in the door, establish at the literal birth of the child how that child will be raised, and in these countries with histories of ideological indoctrination, with histories of using children for things like child soldiers, with histories of monopolizing information, that is the point in which the state has new information to intervene, to indoctrinate these children through the child protection services system. We tell you this at Jules, we tell you this at Never, to no response. Governments with a history of doing this will do this. They've already had the incentive to. Side affirmative affords them additional information capacity they do not have under our side. Well, how then do we win this debate? We win on vulnerability because not only does the opposition weaponize governments against minority parents and literally give them the ability to strip their child away, they also place more pressure on child protection services in you know, uh, you know, like countries where this uh, discrimination of minorities does not happen because they overload the system with red herring claims. That means the average time in which child protection services takes to respond to claims and reports of abuse gets longer. More children are subject to abuse. Child protection services investigates claims that have been flagged of an arbitrary test that is unlikely to be reflective of different parenting norms. They waste their time, they waste their resources. We would tell you we would use all the fiat and the cost of these classes to just put in the child protection services in the first place, make them more efficient in responding to actual claims of abuse, of abuse actual claims of violence. We win on that metric. At the end, at worst for side opposition, not only do they remove kids unjustly from their parents and traumatize literally everyone in the process, at their best, they profile and confuse parents with different parenting norms, different pieces of parenting information that's likely to make them worse parents when you experience the cultural dissonance where the state tells you something's in direct contradiction to your traditional means of raising your children. At this point in the debate, you must believe we're the only side that cares for the most vulnerable stakeholder. Opposition gives, uh, opposition gives idolatry and historically dangerous governments the ability to indoctrinate children and remove them from their houses. We're the only side that takes care of these stakeholders. That is why we must win the debate. Thank you. <coughs> Panel, 90, 90, like 90 percent of parents are good actors who love their, uh, who, who love their kids. And what and what 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 is best for them? This is what the debate is about. This is the massive delta. It is unclear why the neighbor is entirely focused on what quite 
uh, well, quite minor points about some discrimination. Given like six minutes of uh, my speech and Amy's speech, we were talking about education. Probably about seven to seven thirty minutes of Nathan's speech, we were talking about education. That is a clear double debate because that is going to get cast a far more wider name than their asymmetrical heart. Okay, so education. What did we tell you about it, and why is it most important to like very very little response? So we told you a couple. We told you that like the most effective, the biggest, most concrete benefit that any type can deliver it is that parents get more uh, educated because they're being offered with more substantive, more credible uh, re resources. But then also uh, that they like uh, they basically try to tell us what they do this anyway. But we told you that these resources are always going to be better because they always are going to be substantiated and backed by evidence. But then also, second, we explained that they're more likely to actually synthesize and engage in these in order to like pass the test, as opposed to just like you know reading through or skimming through in order to validate themselves to them and their friends. Okay. Thanks. Um, yeah. What like and what like and they didn't never really respond to it apart from just like an intro that came out at second end, which was like oh there's like different types of parents, but it's extremely unclear. They never actually explained why like the government's likely to favour like conflicting or unsure like different theories of parenting as opposed to either copying them both or as opposed to what we explained to you at first and at second. The fact that like it's probably going to concrete are uh, probably going to focus on a large um, amount of concrete harms which can maybe be justifiable, such as things such as like over pressuring your kids or showing like favouritism or you know. Being maybe like hitting them when they do something like really, really, um, um, really, really wrong. The, these parents are like things that good parents, parents who want to best for their kids, quite like are quite likely to engage in because they're just simply not informed, do not understand. Um, it's simply that is uh, not informed, uh, not understand. And we believe that educating these parents, which will cast the biggest and most concrete benefits, with likely to improve a child's welfare to the greatest extent. But then we were also able to provide a second win condition under the world of education. Because at the point where we engage with these tests, we are creating a large set of substantiated data, which like the only response kind of came through at like in, re uh, in reply, no, like not allowed. We explained to you the fact that like this data can be used to help take our uh, ideology, which means they're like only kind of harm that they can potentially take a parental for um harm to try and mitigate these impacts is like oh this will increase the amount of claims of like uh, in child welfare. Um, probably actually like it probably doesn't stand because as we explained to you, literally at first we literally just go and at second as well we're able to prevent these things from happening because now we understand potential problems and potential things that are leading to parenting late engaging in child neglect and able to actually approach a preventative approach. Now how does this way up against discrimination? Note this is like our uh, applying to a far 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 smaller group um, and, uh, I, and just never has enough, the impacts are never big enough to understand what is quite a concrete harm to quite a lot, um, uh, a lot of uh, people. So, what did they claim? They claim that this will be used by governments in order to like persecute, persecute minorities. But they never explain why this is like not symmetrical, why they like don't do um, anything. No, they gave a bunch of examples of like governments actively doing this when these systems are not in, in place. It is unclear to me why like a government that like just doesn't claim these things such as censorship or it's just like a dictatorship will just engage with it anyway and actually like like need the test. Like no like regardless of whether or not like like no the opposition said, oh they might be able to like justify it. But often these governments don't even like like get justify the actions themselves. But then they, they never like um and they never think apart from like some mitigation of like, oh, like what, this won't be that effective. The fact that we, by the point where like, you are, have like substantive proof that you are a good parent because you did really, really well in these tests, that you can kind of prove that to sort of help your claim against them, which will be extremely effective in kind of when you're like appealing to international communities to increase media pressure and to increase global pressure, because now you have a substantive claim as opposed to our vote uh, against them. Just remember, this is about just educating parents. This is the biggest, most concrete harm. It came up with most of their speeches, and uh, despite the name of to mischaracterize it and lead you away from this, this was never able to um, overcome our most concrete wide net harm. Thank you all very much for the debate. This is a bit of a chestnut talk, but it's, I think it's always useful to be set again every couple of years that teams engage with it well, as was done in today's debate. Um, we're going to give general feedback, and as a result, go through the reasons for the result. Um, I think there's just two things in general feedback I have today. The first one is I want to get more, I want teams to get way more specific a lot quicker in the debate about the types of questions and I, I guess conceptions of what would be good and and or bad in quotation marks, versions of parenting that wouldn't wouldn't be covered or how it would operate in the debate. I think that specificity and clarity would make it a lot clearer. As to, as to why the outcomes are likely to be the way that teams want to be. I think secondly, um, there's probably also more use in this debate to have a bit of more discussion about the status quo, about how parents gain information and how they learn to, to raise children. Because it is quite terrifying, right? It's like, you have a baby, that's a huge medical thing, and then it's just like, you go home. 
Like that seems terrifying, right? So I think from app, there's a lot more space to talk about what is the status quo and why it's so inefficient to create more of a comparative. And similarly from Neg, there are mentions of what status quo does to, to encourage brands, maybe a stronger defense of what that looks like and why it is so uh, effective. Because obviously somehow we've survived as a society, as a world for a long time. What has it been the case that we've done with our kids to make that happen? Um, I think that's the main things in, in general feedback, the rest is probably individual or team based. Um, we ended up coming to a unanimous decision with the debate being awarded decided negative. Congratulations. Um, there were three questions in the debate today, looking firstly at children, then parents, then I guess uh, society, miscellaneous stuff at the end. Um, on children, the, the, the only real part of the children clash in today's debate is about preventing uh, children from abuse. And I think after is a very good job of impacting why it's particularly important, why we should do it, and the way they approach it today is by their model. And, and through this testing process, any sort of like red flags get brought up or any sort of like um, suspicious or concerns get brought up and then that can lead to more monitoring and more pr uh, protection of these children to identify as things go down, as things get worse later on down the track. I think the negative team has a couple of responses to identify why the sorts of serious abuse that we're talking about are unlikely to be captured by this model. The first being that the tests are really easy to, to get around, so you're obviously not going to answer questions that say smacking is good or hitting children is good if you know that is the thing that you're going to be fouled on, or if the teacher says that that is not um, what's going to happen. I think the second thing they talk about is that a lot of the abuse that occurs that we don't want to occur is very context dependent on when it occurs in situations of stress or alcoholism, etc., which are unlikely to be replicated in testing environments. I mean, you don't actually pick up on those environments. Uh, I think the third response they say is that lots of the um, uh, the sorts of um, uh, um, oh no, so that's a different issue. Yeah, so at th that point then, I think the two biggest push, the two responses there, I think, sort of prove why the most bit of uh, abuse won't happen. This is, it won't be caught rather. This is also not helped by the concession we hear later in the negative case that they're not likely to catch a lot of the most abusive stuff that occurs um, uh, in the debate. That is probably, if I step into feedback for a second, more of a, a strategy question after we've looked at about whether or not we're targeting a big level thing here or just targeting really low hanging fruit and locking in that benefit from the winners of strategy thing. But I think at the point where that's conceded, there is not a whole lot that could be done, for, I, I think on fixing or calling out the abuse that's likely to occur. Um, there obviously is a spectrum of parents, and the step under that becomes, I guess, the more moderate parents, parents who may have mistakes or not be uh, not know what they're doing, but that is more into the parents' issue than it is in the children's issue. So I think on this part, um, Neg shows this model doesn't have a unique additional benefit in preventing abuse uh, from occurring. So let's then look at, um, at parents and why this is unlikely to be good or how it's going to impact them. I think the, the biggest push here comes firstly from a negative team to talk about why the different parenting standards and styles are likely to be unrepresented by this model, which means a lot of individual groups are going to be left out of the system and unfairly targeted by it. I think they give a good set of reasons as to why it is likely to be majoritarian in terms of how the tests have to be done, large classes, centralised government bodies, etc., which probably does rule out lots of different groups. And the examples we get around what might be um, different forms of parenting around like choices around breastfeeding, skin to skin contact, etc. All sort of highlight different ways in which there is no objective good or bad approach to parenting. I think given app is a bit unclear on whether or not those multiple varieties of parenting would be accepted on the classes or would be picked to one, I think we're inclined to believe from app that this would likely result in a number of groups or, or, or be, sorry, the premise being a lot of groups and different have different approaches and therefore the state can't set a predominant one. But then the harm of that being when the state does set a predominant one, a lot of groups are likely to be harmed by that. That is uh, like like LGBTQ couples, polyamorous couples, couples that don't like, just have, I guess, different parenting styles, what the norm is, but also that is then worsened in context where the state has pernicious actions or wants to act uh, in, in a particularly um, uh, pernicious way. Um, that, I think, then um, uh, makes the whole child protection system a lot worse for those parents. So, yeah, I think it does lead to a way in which those groups can be targeted. We get a response from AFT to say that, well, those countries that are abusive Oh, sorry, that are the states that are abusive to minorities and allow this sort of behavior to happen are likely to find other ways and other aspects to do it. I think that's probably reasonable in some of the more extreme examples app uses, but I think there's a lot of other cases where this probably would still uh, allow for that abuse uh, to occur. And I don't think the mechanism of calling out for inter like, uh, backlash internationally, calling out uh, bad state actors is likely to be effective in changing those processes then. So I think there's likely to be a significant degree of change. And even if there's already a degree of abuse of minority groups by these states, giving them an extra way in which to do it, an extra invitation to the house, as is described uh, on the negative team, is not a, a useful thing for those groups and actually makes those harms worse for them. So I think then we have a large group of parents. We're not getting a massive benefit for the children, and those harms then weigh out better against them. Where I think the second benefit to parents becomes a stronger push from app is this idea about education. There's just a lot of things to learn, and it's really important that parents are given information and given access to, um, to, to, 
to information to get to, 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 to better raise their children and avoid things like misconceptions of uh, anti-vaxxers and the worst examples. I think on stuff like the anti-vaxxers, I think the response we get from Neg to say that lots of those people are quote unquote the most researched, so they're the ones that are likely to already drunk the Kool-Aid and already believe that stuff, probably means this course is unlikely to change them and the same reasons why you can avoid the abuse questions means you probably avoid these questions as well uh, and still get away from it. But I think Negative also points out that there's a lot of stuff here about why you, there's already plenty of access to information. It's like when you, you get information in booklets from the hospital, you have parents who tell you things as societal norms that people are likely to do their own research. And I, and I guess linking back to the general feedback I gave earlier, absent a uh, discussion or debate about is that an efficient or effective status quo, we're inclined to believe from there's enough uh, uh, information in the status quo that already means the educational benefits in the app talks. So I've said everyone around the wrong way. All the, there's enough information in the status quo. As negative points out that means um, you don't necessarily get a huge benefit on AF that outweighs the other potential risks um, that um, that happen. The last thing on parents, I think uh, Neg raises good material on why there's just a bunch of reasons, uh, even if the state is acting in a good way, um, that mean that the people are going to do the test badly. They could just be stressed, they could be sleep deprived, illiterate, very bad at tests, uh, speak a different language or have like significant cultural differences like indigenous groups that mean they don't align even if the state is trying to be uh, good in those instances although in the case of indigenous Australians probably not trying to be good in those instances so I think all that means then the test is also likely to be quite bad for those parents overall um, which means that issue also falls to side negative the last one then is just on societal impacts the first thing we have here is about data and so I think we can claim from after we just have a lot more data now about parents so we can better target resources um, uh, uh, to use. And there's two benefits app brings of this. The first is it now becomes a sort of like, it defeats a sort of racist presumption about these parents, about how things operate by saying, well, no, the data says that they are, they're, they're acting well. I guess that is all contingent upon the state setting up the test in ways that's really favorable to those groups. And given the previous two clashes, I think that mechanism falls. I think the second mechanism is about just having more information to target services better around community areas. I think we get a response from Neg that just says, well, we can just have surveys that achieve the same outcome, but don't come with all these loaded bits on the, bits on top. Um, I think that's probably sufficient for Neg to get up on this issue because neither team makes a, a huge big deal out of data, it's hard to weigh that more importantly than the parents and kids stuff either. So I think it's probably a low impact here. Maybe we get somewhat better data, but not an exclusive way to get that data. The second thing is about the child protection systems. I think that uh, Neg does a good job to explain why they are already, or they identify they're already overloaded, and then why this is likely to add a huge amount of extra work to them as lots of red flags and observations are brought up about behaviour uh, that mean they have a lot more work to do, which actually then also leads probably to more racial profiling, or at least because that is a shortcut of how to make those decisions then based around those based around those groups. So I think we end up with a worse child protection system. I think they also have some good points too, that if we're pulling kids out of families prematurely or unnecessarily, there's not guaranteed that the foster care system or alternatives are likely to be better for those kids given the history that occurs in those areas. Um, and the uh, and oh that is the last part sorry for that I got my issues mixed up so I think at that point then the stuff on um, the impacts on the, the societal structures are probably also likely to be bad or not particularly uh, high impact and those are the reasons why negative takes the debate hope that all made sense thank you all very much again for the debate good luck for the rest of the tournament.